In this video, we create something that's been missing for a long time. That is, of course, a way to complete a level. We'll have a look at triggers, UI, loading the next level in the queue, and the most fun part, animation. Let's go. Let's begin by creating a trigger that we'll place at the end of our level. Let's go to the hierarchy, right click, go 3D object and then cube. Let's also switch to 3D mode here, reset the transform on the cube, hit F to focus on it. Let's set the X scale to 15, the same as our platform. Let's set the Y to something like 5 and the Z to something like 5 as well. We'll also drag it up a bit, let's set the Y position to 3. This way it stands on our platform. Let's switch to top mode by clicking the Y axis and switch to isometric by clicking the center. We can now zoom out and drag him to the end of our level. Let's also rename this to something like end, end point, end trigger, anything you like. And you will notice right now that if we switch back to perspective view, we can of course see the trigger. And we don't want this to be noticeable in game. So let's just go ahead and disable the mesh renderer. You can of course remove it completely. I just like having it here for easy positioning. We'll of course keep the box collider, but remember to check is trigger. And if we go ahead and put a script on this, it should actually trigger. But in the editor, it can be kind of annoying if we can't see our object. So let's just select our object, go up here and select the box and we can actually choose an icon. I'm going to select the green label here and now even though our object is invisible, we always have this green label to show where our endpoint is and we can of course click it to select it. Pretty cool. Let's now create a script that will communicate with our game manager to let it know that we've reached the end of our level. To do that we go add component and we call it something like end trigger. Let's say create an add and double click it. Let's delete our using tags and our two methods. Now just like we can detect a collision by using void on collision enter, we can detect if something has hit our trigger by using void on trigger enter. Note that on collision enter will not work if your collider is marked as trigger. You need to write on trigger enter instead. We then open and close some parentheses and some curly brackets. Now whenever we hit our trigger, we need to tell our game manager to display some UI on the screen. To do that, we first need a reference to our game manager. Of course, we could use find object of type as shown in the last video, but I think here it makes sense to just reference it directly. So let's create a new public game manager and call it game manager with a non capital G. We can then go down here and write game manager dot. And now we have the ability to call a function on the game manager. Of course, we haven't really created a function that we want to call yet. So now let's go back into unity and open up our game manager script. In here we have code for ending the game if we hit something and then restarting it, but we also need a function to call if we actually succeed. So let's go in here and create another public void. Again, remember the order doesn't matter. It could be up here, down here, and even below the restart method, as long as it's not within another method. So let's write public void and let's call this one complete level. And for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a debug.log statement saying something like level one. Let's save that, go back into our in trigger script, and now we should be able to access that function. Game manager dot and then complete level. Of course, we also need to actually make this reference. Let's find our end object and drag our game manager under the empty slot. Now, if we hit play and actually manage to reach the end of our level, you can see that it displays in the console level one. This will also display if any other objects collides with our trigger. So make sure it doesn't touch anything but our player. If you have problems with other objects touching the trigger, you can use pretty much the same technique as we did with our player collision to check what object has collided and only act if it was tagged as player. So currently displaying a message in the console is a bit boring. Let's instead show some UI to let the user know that he did it. Let's go under the canvas, right click, and create a new UI panel. Let's also switch to 2D mode and hit F to focus on it. As you can see, a panel is basically just an image that currently fits the entire screen and it will always resize to fit it. Instead of using the default background source image, I'm actually gonna go in here and change it to none. This just means that our image will be a blank color. I'm gonna make it completely white and remove the transparency by bumping up the alpha. I'm gonna rename it to something like level complete and I'm gonna right click on the object, go UI and add some text. I'm gonna scale up the boundaries of our text centered on both the X and Y and change the font to something Roboto. Let's choose Roboto thin. Let's bump up the font size to something like 100 and let's change the text to level. I'm also going to change the name of the object to level We then duplicate it and this one is going to be named complete. Let's also change the text to complete. I'm doing this in capital to increase the dramatic effect. Let's change the font here to Roboto bold, drag it down and I'm holding down shift to only drag it on one axis. Let's bump down the font size to something like 53. And I'm just gonna put them a bit closer together, select both of the objects and drag them up a bit as well. Very simplistic, but I think it looks pretty good. And this will of course also scale with our screen. 
Also, I want to take this text object that displays our score and just rename it to score. It's good to stay organized. Finally, let's take our level complete and disable it. This way we don't start with level complete on the screen. Let's now take our game manager and add a bit of code. First off, we need a reference to our UI so that we can enable it when we complete the level. To do that, we create a public game object and we call it something like complete level UI. Then under our complete level function, we write complete level UI dot and then set active. And in here we can write false if we want to disable it or true if we want to enable it. And of course we want to enable it. So we write true. Let's save that, go into Unity, reference our UI. Notice that I can create a reference even though the object is disabled. Let's try and hit play and we should now see that once we reach our trigger, the UI will display. It's not currently animated in any way, so it looks a bit boring, but at least it works. So let's go ahead and create an animation. To do that, we find our level complete and we enable it so we can see what we're doing. We also need the animation window. So let's go window, animation. Make sure you choose animation and not animate door. There's a difference there. The animation window, as you can see here, has a timeline and allows you to animate different properties on any object in Unity. The animate door is responsible for playing animations and transitioning from one animation to another. Because we only need a single animation here, we don't need to focus on the animator, but on the animation. Let's go to the animation window here. Let's hit create. Let's create a separate folder because animations quickly stack up. Let's call this folder animation. And under this, let's create a new animation called level Level complete. Notice if we go to the project panel, there's now a animation folder and inside are two assets. The first one is the animation itself. We need to disable looping because we only want the animation to happen once. The second one is the animation controller and this is what we edit in the animator. Notice how I can drag this animation into the animator and how we can make transitions from one animation to another. Now this is of course the same animation so it's not going to do much but imagine we can have a whole network of animations in here to create very complex behaviors. I'm just gonna undo those. Now you can see that it's automatically added the level complete animation and made it orange. This means that it will play as the first animation, that means as soon as our level complete gets enabled. So we don't have to trigger it anywhere, it's just gonna play by itself. So let's go to the scene view so we can see what we're doing, and let's go back to the animation window as well. Notice how the play buttons are red, that's because we are in record mode. And now any changes we make to the object are going to be recorded as keyframes. For example, if we go forward about a second, go under the color of the image and bump down the alpha, we can now see that a keyframe is created at the 1 second mark and at the 0 second mark. In the beginning the alpha is normal and it's then going to start fading out. And this is only happening on the background. Of course we need to reverse this so we'll take our two keyframes and change their positions. We can also make it a bit quicker. There we go, so now our background fades in and we probably need to do something similar to our two text objects. So let's select our level, let's maybe go a bit forward and change the alpha to 0. Let's do the same thing with our complete. Now again we have to flip these keyframes, so let's take the bottom two keyframes here which is the alpha of our complete and level text, move that forward and move these ones back. Let's have them start fading in a bit later than the background. So now if we play this back, we can see that it fades to white and then the text fades in. I think that looks pretty cool. So now that we're satisfied with that, we can go out of record mode and we can once again disable our level complete object. And that's it. If we now play the game, this animation should automatically play. Awesome. Now we can do a lot more with the Unity animation system. The last thing that I'm going to show you here is that if we zoom out and go forward a bit, we can actually have things happen through script at a certain point in our animation. In our case, we want to load the next level after a few seconds. So let's go forward towards the two second mark, I'm just going to put it here, and add an event. Now this animation event allows us to select a function. You can see how many things are here by default. What we want to do is create a small script that sits on the level complete object. In order for the event to work, it has to sit on the same object that we are animating and the script will just load a new level. So let's go here and add a new component. This one will call it something like level complete. We can double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. We can clean up as usual and now we can create a public void called something like load next level. Notice how even though we don't have any more code than this, we can now save this and when we go back into Unity and select our animation event, go and do function and go down a bit, at the very bottom we see load next level. So now whenever we reach this point in our animation, it's going to automatically call load next level in our script. And now in here we can change the scene. Of course to do that we need to write using Unity Engine dot scene management. Then down here we write scene manager dot load scene and then the name of the scene that we want to load. But of course the scene that we want to load is going to depend on what level we're currently on. We just want to load the next one in the queue. So what we do is instead of using the name, we use the build index. Remember if we go into Unity, 
go file and then build settings, we can see all of the different scenes that we want to include when we export the game. Currently we only have one here and that's level one. Each scene in this list has a build index. That's the number to the right. So what we can do is simply ask Unity to load the scene with the build index that is equal to our currently loaded scene plus one. So in case we are on level one, which has an index of zero, we want to load zero plus one, which is one, which is going to equal level two. So to do that in Visual Studio, we simply write scene manager dot get active scene to get the scene that we're currently on and then dot build index to get the build index of the scene we're currently on. And then we write plus one and we close it off. And that's actually all we need to do so we can now save this. And of course in Unity we need to now make sure that there's always another level waiting. If we just run out of scenes it is going to create an error. So just make sure to create a scene congratulating the player when you speed all of the levels. I think we'll have a look at doing that in the next video. For now we can just go ahead and duplicate our current level. So let's save our current scene by hitting control s command s if you're on the mac let's then select level one press ctrl d to duplicate let's double click on level two and we can now see that level two is open up here and what we can do to make this look a bit different is just delete all of the obstacles except the first one and we can maybe just move this over so if we save this level two looks like this and level one looks like this if we then drag level two under level one we can see that two build indexes and if we now run level one we should see that when we reach the end of our level it's going to display the ui and then load the next scene and of course if we reach the end of that scene it's going to throw an error because there are no more scenes added to the build settings but we'll fix that don't worry so that was pretty much all i had to show for this video renewing the end of the series i still want to dedicate at least one more video to wrap things up and then we can have a look at exporting everything to the platforms that you want the series has been really fun to make so far but i don't want to have too many videos in one series instead i want to make more videos with standalone subjects that can apply to many games that of course also means that i will make lots of more videos that are relevant to this series so don't worry lots more to come of course make sure to subscribe if you aren't already. All right, thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome people who donated in February and a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James Callahan, and Jason Latito. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash Thanks a lot guys.